Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Village of Bartlett Committee of the Whole meeting for May 7, 2024. I call this meeting to order, and again, please ask, ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee Daney? Here. Gansey? Here. Gunstein? Here. Hopkins? Here. Port? Here. Swanski? Here. President Wallace? Here. First item we have this evening on our committee uh, meeting is town hall. If anyone would like to address the uh, um, committee at this point, mm -hmm. kindly step up to the podium, state your name and uh, address for the record, and try to keep your comments to three minutes. If anyone would like to address the committee at this time? One more shot for Chris. Chris, is anyone online like to address the committee? No, Mayor, there's not. Thank you, sir. We'll move on to standing committee reports. License and Ordinance Committee Chairman Hopkins. Thank you, President Wallace. We have one item on our agenda, and that's an ordinance amending the Bartlett Municipal Code regarding noise limitation. Attached is an ordinance amending the Bartlett Municipal Code regarding noise limitations. With that, does the Chief want to go over this a little bit? Like Thank you, Chairman Hopkins. What was the reason for it? And the Police Department is requesting the Village Board to consider an ordinance amending the Bartlett Municipal Code uh, regarding noise limitations. I now would like to turn over the discussion to Deputy Chief Rob Sweeney for more background. Um, so the main reason for this amendment to the ordinance is that uh, we're trying to allow our officers to have some enforcement action uh, when we get complaints in residential areas of the town uh, that have noise complaints. Currently, our ordinance just applies to our commercial and business districts, and the vast majority of the complaints that officers are responding to are in residential areas. So we would have violations and really no recourse for officers to take if there was no compliance. So with this amendment uh, that we're requesting, I want it to be clear that this wouldn't be uh, an increase in um, violations or enforcement action. We would still allow all violators the opportunity to abate the noise violations and to comply with our ordinance, uh, but this would just give officers the ability in a proper section uh, to write if violations continue to occur. Prior to this uh, requested amendment, the only option officers would have would be to write a dis uh, disorderly conduct violation, which was kind of a stretch for a noise violation in a residential area. So this uh, proposed amendment would just be a more appropriate uh, section if there were violations in residential areas. Uh, with that, we're also asking for an amendment to the amplification, uh, Amplify regulations, and that is just to clean up some of the language that's already pre-existing, uh, removing what we call a special use permit for noise violations. Um, we don't, we actually have amplifier permits that are requested when there's an exemption to that rule, so we don't need the special use permit. Is there any questions from the committee? What type of enforcement action are you so you're going to write a citation? It would be a citation, a local ordinance citation. Uh, so violations would have to go to Cook County, the Rolling Meadows District. And is there a fine involved? I mean, what's the teeth uh, in this? It wouldn't be a pay-by-mail fine. It would be they'd go before a judge, and a judge could impose a fine, or they could impose community service, or they could you know, come to another resolution. Because a lot. what's nice about this, too, is it wouldn't necessarily need a complaint to go to court. Um, police officers could write the, the citation on their behalf because the restriction would be a um, distance if the, the noise or disturbance was heard within 50 feet of a structure. Um, so yeah, it would really be up to the judge at what uh, outcome would be in court. Is there any way to um, make these citations come to our uh, local adjudication versus Cook County? I believe that would be possible. We would just need to work with the uh, village attorney to amend the the ordinance in regard to local adjudication. Don't you think, would that be more appropriate, you think? Yeah, and with that, we could also uh, consider doing the pay by mail if we wanted to look into that option. Very similar to what we have for uh, certain other offenses, such as uh, fireworks violations, or there's several other ones that could be included in that one, too. So I just want to try to understand this a little bit. Let's say I'm in my backyard, I'm playing my music, my neighbor doesn't like me, calls the police, I since turned down my music, I go inside, have a cup of coffee, the police come, your music was too loud. Could I be cited for that? Is this on the neighbor's word or does the officer physically have to hear this? So the way that the ordinance is, um, we, we are also changing 
for requesting to change the uh, the distance for amplification from 50 foot uh, sound restriction um, either from the property or from a vehicle and the reason why we're requesting that in case you're not aware on 2023 the police department responded to 284 noise complaints throughout the village and uh, many of these areas as we uh, mentioned are in residential areas which if you look at our current ordinance we, we have no enforcement action um, specifically 92 of these complaints were received from the residents of the Bartlett Lake apartments and uh, we've been meeting with them on a regular basis and they've been voicing a lot of their frustrations with us too that they give us a call and just see us drive around and that's because we have no enforcement action um, so to answer your question if we would get a complaint what we would do is try to as uh, Deputy Chief Sweeney mentioned ask you to uh, abate the noise and you know give you a chance to fix it and then if it continues then it just gives us another tool in our tool belt to consider taking a specific enforcement action which we haven't been able to do in the 28 years that I've been here thank you for that Excellent. can you share the nature of some of these complaints is it just music well, the majority of them are going to be your loud music, your loud parties. Um, we thought it would just be really beneficial, especially in the summertime, when um, we start to see a lot of these noise uh, complaints. Um, as I mentioned, we had a, a few specific problems in the Bartlett Lake area. Um, as you are aware, that uh, they had some incidents over there, not necessarily related to noise complaints, but you know that was asked from the residents and their management is uh, asking us to do something because currently right now um, they voiced as I mentioned their concern to us is they see us drive through and do nothing and it's just a really bad perception of the police department and that's because we were really just uh, confined by what we were not able to do based on the verbiage in the ordinance so the sound has to be heard past that 50-foot barrier but if you're in an apartment you're going to be within 50 feet of somebody your next door neighbor your front door is going to be within 50 feet of then your next door neighbor's front door well most like a vehicle outside is that so, more what you're talking about so that has to do with the amplifier regulations that has to do with somebody's playing like their music really loud um as i mentioned we always ask people to try to resolve the issue tickets and enforcement are always our last option How does this compare to surrounding villages ordinances? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? <clears throat> How does this compare to the surrounding villages noise ordinances? Um, I would say that it would put us in line with other ordinances, specifically because they do allow um, their ordinance to incorporate residential areas, which ours don't. And actually, a lot of our stuff that we looked at, we um, worked with the village attorney, which was modeled after the city of Aurora's ordinances and other towns as well too. And then to go back to your question, Trustee Swanski, we really think by um, incorporating this ordinance that uh, this would eventually reduce a lot of the noise complaints that the police department responds to. In most lease agreements, there's quiet hours. Mm -hmm. So I can speak to Bartlett Terrace. And uh, after 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. You know, it's supposed to be quiet anyway. People are supposed to understand they're living in a, a, in a community, community so right. it's not like you own your own home. Uh, so we have that, but but to their point, we have no way of enforcing it. And, and we ask the tenants to call the police. So, but if, they, if their hands are tied, then it doesn't no, do them I, any good. And I agree with Adam with regards to looking at handling it in a, a local court as opposed to cooking. Yeah, I think so. I would agree with that. DuPage, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it's a great idea. Especially if you guys think it's a good idea. Yeah, um, we, we really think that uh, we can benefit from this, just as the pure amount of noise complaints we get throughout a year, which takes a, a lot of time and staff efforts. And especially since we weren't able to do anything, there's a lot of times we're just, we keep on going back to the same house, same house, and there's nothing we can do about it, which leads to frustration with the neighbors. Yeah, and a waste of time for the police department. So it would be interesting to see, I just add one note um, when we move this to the board and get it passed, is um, the, the numbers, once this goes into effect, what the next year's numbers look like, you know? So, because if, it, if you're passing something and it doesn't drop those numbers, then we gotta figure out something else. Yeah, I think uh, we have a really good baseline right now. 
as we presented to you tonight. And um, I will make sure that our staff, um, you know, keeps a good uh, record of that, yeah. just in case, um, you know, we can follow up on it to see if there's anything else we need to do. What would the fee be or the penalty be on a ticket on that? Um, it would be based on whatever the, um, the ordinance that was approved. Okay. Currently, a lot of our local adjudication citations, I believe, are anywhere from zero, I believe, to $500. Is that correct, Kurt? Yeah, we can. I, I, some of them go up. 750 is usually the max that we'll cap. And, and I'm sure you probably get calls from the same people over and over. So it would be interesting to add some language in this for first offense, strike one, second offense, fine, third offense, $500, right? I mean, our officers are very reasonable because we will get some noise complaints at 4 p.m., 5 p.m., and that's obviously not where we want to target. We want to target the 11 p.m., 12 p.m., 1 a.m., when it's unreasonable noise violations is what we're targeting. Okay, good. Now, uh, it says for discussion only, but is this going to be prepared and then sent to the board for a final vote? Is that what you're looking for? That is correct. We're hoping to bring it to a board at the, uh, for the next board meeting. Excellent. That's all we have under licenses and ordinances. Thank, Thank you. you guys for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Hopkins. Um, next item, Public Works and Golf Committee, Chairman Daney. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, what we have before us is the uh, pre a tree preservation discussion <clears throat> has to do with uh, cutting down trees on, of uh, property that have not submitted plans for development. And Christy, I'd like you to take this and explain what's going on here. ago or so we had complaints about a property owner who had clear-cut a parcel of land on Lake Street and Horizon Drive the current village ordinance only requires a tree preservation plan once someone has submitted a development application so if someone does not submit a development application they're able to clear as many trees as they want they don't they're not required to get a permit of any sort from the village um, staff was directed to research tree preservation ordinances we gathered a, we did a survey through the um, municipal conferences, got a lot of results back, and tree preservation ordinances really run the gamut of being incredibly restrictive or being pretty much lax where they only cover trees that are within public property, so in the parkways, parks, village-owned sites. Um, I researched the tree preservation easements that we have in many of our subdivisions, and it looks like the village has tended to only require tree preservation along perimeters of development. Um, and so in keeping with that, if the board thinks this is something that we want to enforce for the development sites that are still out there that have never had any sort of development on them, if they would like to enact an ordinance so that you protect, you keep that 50 foot buffer until we get development plans submitted in the future. So we also had a property on Devon Avenue where they did the same thing. They clear cut the property. However, they installed a fence. We didn't get any complaints about that. We got calls saying what's going on and we said there's no development plans, but they put in a fence. Uh, we don't want to do something that's overly burdensome. A lot of time developers want to know what the property is going to be like before they purchase it. So it kind of gives, it's still development friendly, but it's also giving some sort of buffer for the residents there who are used to having trees there. Again, not all the, we don't want them to have to go to the expense of having a tree survey prepared and if there's no plans for development. <clears throat> Steve, I wanted to ask you this. With, uh, with what you're uh, proposing, what staff's proposing, what uh, would, would the site have looked like at uh, Lake Street and uh, Route 59? We know what it is now, right. but what, what you're proposing, what staff's proposing, give us some kind of a vision of what <clears throat> you, you So you would not be able to see the rear of those townhomes from Lake Street if they had maintained that 50-foot buffer. Again, if they wanted to remove trees, we would ask that they turn in a tree survey. It would be reviewed by the village forester so she could see what kind of species they are, the quality of the trees. So we would still give them some flexibility with that. We would just want to have more information up front. Is this in any way related to residential property? No. Staff was looking at making that. We don't want to be, when someone wants to cut down a tree, 
we do not want to be getting involved on whether someone can cut down a tree on their own parcel. Well, I don't think it's the village's <laughs> purview to tell me if I can cut a tree down or not. So I will tell you, we do have some subdivisions where there are tree easements that the village is responsible for. If a tree falls down in that easement, they have to get permission from the village board to remove a fallen tree. I do not propose anything like that. <laughs> Don't we have landscaping ordinances for new development that requires, if there's no trees there, to be either put back in or an excessive amount of trees be put in in any case of a development? Correct. They would, no, whenever development does happen, there would have to be a landscape plan that would get reviewed. This is just in the meantime so that there's some sort of buffer so residents aren't shocked. Mm -hmm. And this would only be along properties that are abutting residential. So if it's a site that's surrounded by commercial and they want to cut the property, the village isn't getting involved. So kind of like, let's just use a lot off of Lake Street or Horizon Drive. If that buffer zone was 50 feet and there was 100-year-old oak trees there, it's, a, a lot, it's going to be a lot different than new trees or new landscaping that was put in. So it would help preserve old trees that could potentially be there. Right. But Until again, such time as a developer comes in and needs to remove those for his development. Right, but we would be looking at the plans at that time to see if there's trees that are worth preserving or if they want to cut down something that's larger, we could say, if you're removing a tree of this size, you have to plant five at this reduced size. And you wouldn't know if they cleared the lot. Right. Correct. And what are the repercussions if they clear <clears throat> without notifying the village? It would be, they'd be written a citation up to 750? Up to 750 because it's a zoning ordinance. It'd be a zoning violation. Can we change that? I don't think that's going to thwart anybody from going all Paul Bunyan on us. <laughs> I would tell you that. I will tell you that we would get a call from residents if they're seeing someone cutting property. We got the phone. We get the phone calls right away. It's the anti-Paul Bunyan Act. I, Is it 750 per day? So let's say we went over there, gave them a citation, and they didn't want to stop, and they just kept going. They could, correct. Every day they could be... They could be cited every day. I, I have, I'm kind of torn on this because I've, I'm, you know, I develop properties and there's certain limitations of what you can develop when there's trees there. Mm -hmm. And I know of a development in Elgin where Bigger Chevrolet went on Randall Road. They literally had to redesign their entire parking lot with about a 50 foot circular uh, landscape area right in the middle of their parking lot to preserve a tree. So they have a really stingy, tight, tree ordinance there right. and I don't want to you know so my understanding is she's they were, they're talking about the, the line right. against buffering between a residential well, I'm saying this is a lot looser than some of our neighboring communities significantly but it's we have nothing at this point in time like, like I'm saying it just it wouldn't allow somebody to go all Paul Bunyan and clear a, clear a complete stretch of trees all the way back and including the ones that are guarding somebody else's property until they actually let us know. Right. So everything in red also has a tree line? Not necessarily. A lot of the sites on the development map, a lot of those were part of other subdivisions. So it's Brewster Creek Business Park. Those sites have already been cleared. I mean, they were filled in. So a lot of the development sites that I have on the map don't even have an established tr tree line. So a lot of the trees that you see, they're not necessarily great oak trees. It's a lot of buckthorn, you know, invasive species. But I will say residents consistently say, I'm used to having the trees there. They don't necessarily take care what the quality is. They're used to the buffer. So this is just trying to work with the residents that are there until we have formal plans. And at that point, if they do want to cut within that 50 feet, nothing's recorded. It's just a temporary buffer that they have to provide until plans are submitted. Once plans are submitted, then we look at our landscape ordinance. There's buffering requirements in there as well. So maybe they are able to cut everything down. They put in a fence, they put in some evergreen trees. We would be working with the developer. We're not handcuffing anyone to maintaining that 50 foot buffer. Yeah. I think this helps us when we have public hearings, when residents come in, they talk about what their needs are as uh, butting up to a a potential development and it I think it would help us make better decisions and hear from residents so I think this is a win for our residents with regards to uh, I'm looking at your map is the red the zones that are in red are, would those be the, the 
sites that we would be. Those are really the only, let me pull it up. I guess where I would go is if, if it's those red sites, could we have our arborist just take a drive in the car one day and just kind of casually glance and say, hey, this site has a couple of trees that might, might be of question. You know, just put, the, put in the notes in the file. I, the problem with that is things change over time and she doesn't necessarily know exactly where that property line is. So okay. that, that's the concern with that. She's just gonna have to work with GIS. Get it figured. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. Good yes, job. Okay, if there are no other questions, this was for discussion only, so uh, I would request that staff amend the uh, building code and uh, we bring before the board for vote. Thank you, Chairman Daney. You got what you need, That's Christy? All yes. Okay. So we have. Mr. Um, with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss purchase or lease of real estate pursuant to section 2C5 of the open meeting. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Daney, seconded by Trustee Laporte. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Daney? Yes. Gansey? Yes. Gunstein? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Laporte? Yes. Sawanski? Yes. We are adjourned to executive session.